All right. So we got to show love to our USC brethren because they played great this week too. And we got to show them love playing their fight song, even though I'm a proud UCLA fan. But we got to show them love too. So um, great start for USC this weekend. They faced old friend Norm Chow in Hawaii and did exactly what we thought they'd do. Beat the living pants off of them. I was surprised USC was generous and get a lot of Hawaii to score 10 points. But hey, second half, they probably didn't care anyway. So, great start. Obviously, um, my first impression was I was kind of curious to see which wide receiver was going to have the big day. Marquise Lee or Robert Woods. Because it seemed like Robert Woods didn't get a lot of ink this year as far as a preseason All-American candidate even though he was a Boletnikov finalist last year, because of how great Marquise Lee was last year, and because Lane Kiffin said that Marquise Lee could be even better because he's further along than Woods was. Um, so, to my surprise, first play of the game, who does Matt Barkley go to? Marquise Lee makes a quick move down the left sideline, six points. And it was funny because on, on the last, like, 40 yards, Robert Woods caught up to Lee, and they were running stride for stride, and... Having seen both of them in high school run track, I was thinking nobody's going to catch them. I haven't seen anybody catch either one of those boys. And the only guy who probably could do it is on their team in George Farmer. So um, that was pretty funny to see. But USC looked good. I mean, Marquise Lee had a great day. 10 catches, 197 yards. Obviously lived up to the hype that he was going to have this year in his first game. Um, he was more impressive. A 100-yard kick return that looked Easy. It just looked easy. I mean, a big hole, he ran right through it. So, Marquise Lee is going to probably have a good year. And I think um, Robert Woods also did well as well. Had two touchdowns. He's going to have a great year as well. I really think it's probably going to just depend on the week-to-week. -week. You know, one week it could be Lee, the next week it could be Woods. But I think both of them are definitely going to get the lion's share of Matt Barkley's throws. And I wouldn't be surprised if both of them ended up with maybe 1,100, maybe 1,200 yards rushing, receiving. Maybe 1,100. That's pretty fair. Um, but, yeah, and give it to Matt Barkley. Four touchdowns. Looked really great. Um, his Heisman campaign got off to a good start, although I still believe that the best player on that team are his wide receivers, but that's just me because I think that as great as Matt Barkley is, he's definitely benefiting from the great help that he has. And he's, he's, he's got great leadership. He makes the right throws. Um I also just give a lot of credit to his his wide receivers as well because he's he makes it a lot easier for a quarterback to do what he can do when he has very sure wide receivers in Marquise Lee and Robert Woods and um, the other talent they have as well. So uh, Silas Red looked really comfortable. 31-yard touchdown run, looked great. Had a nice catch as well. I think he's going to add a nice mix to their running back stable with Curtis McNeil. Um he looked comfortable, so we'll see what happens there. But as I said, I'm very happy for my SoCal guys that I got to see in high school, besides Marquise Lee and Robert Woods. Hayes Pillard out of Crenshaw High School got a pick six, and I was very happy to see that because um, I know the Crenshaw faithful were feeling that one. Um, again, Curtis McNeil had a great game. Greg Townsend out of Beverly Hills High School had, his, had a sack, the son of the um, former Raiders standout. Good start for him. So there's some good talent on USC's team. I really think that this USC team is the best team I've seen USC have since the 2004-2005 season when they went to the national championship and beat Oklahoma senseless. I think they're that good. They're balanced on offense. They have a great defense. They have great guys. You know, they may be young, but they have talent. And they're definitely hungry. And, you know, you can't beat that. Now, the best part about USC – and this should have a great team. Their schedule is very favorable. I mean, look at the schedule. They have no Oregon State, which is usually a house of horrors for them. They host Oregon after beating them last year. They host them, so that's going to be an interesting game, especially with the homecoming of another Crenshaw man, DeAnthony Thomas, who's going to be anxious to show off in front of his friends and family again. Um, that might be the fun game. And then they have Stanford in two weeks, which is going to be very good to see if Stanford, how good Stanford really is. Um, I know they have a, they're going to be very physical. Um, it'll be a good test for USC's run defense. I don't think USC's going to have too much trouble with them, though. So that's going to probably be the only test. And, of course, facing old friend Steve Sarkeesian in Washington on October 13th. Always is a tough game. 
Keith Price is going to make that a very um, great game as a challenging quarterback for Matt Barkley. Another still Cow kid, by the way, out of St. John Bosco. Um, that should be a good game, too. But I don't think USC is going to be challenged, at least until maybe the Pac-12 championship game, where if they face Oregon again, that's going to be fun because it's always hard to beat the same team twice. Ask LSU last year. Um, but I think that if they can get past that, if they can win the Pac-12 championship, no chance. They're on 13-0 this year. They're not going to get challenged. 13-0, see you in South Florida in January, uh, perhaps against Alabama, who looked really good as well. I think this USC team is, if they don't win the national championship this year, it's going to be a disappointment. But at the same time, the fact that they're going to a bowl game this year, the guys are hungry, these guys have been waiting two years for the chance to play in a postseason game, and they're going to be ready to get there no matter what. So we'll see what happens. And as far as the news about these uh, sanctions that have come out saying that a uh, booster or a guy may have paid uh, Joe McKnight and former basketball player Davon Jefferson, we'll just wait and see what happens. I don't think it's going to impact this season at all. I really don't think that it's going to – be that much of a distraction, but it is something to watch for because um, we could it, it could be more more light penalties for USC. It could be heavy. I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure exactly what to make of it, but it does deserve, deserve mentioning because um, obviously when you hear USC sanctions, they already just got off probation, got over the sanctions, and they get sanctioned again. That could be a trouble, but we'll see what happens there. I don't think there's anything to worry about just yet. Anyway, that's my um, analysis of USC's first win. And their um, the rest of their season outlook. Um, go to my blog, virgogumbo.blogspot.com. I just put up my football column there. You can read more about my thoughts on this um, past weekend of college football. I'm going to be doing these videos for UCLA and USC together now. So you don't have to worry about my UCLA fans getting happy that I'm showing love to them or the USC faithful mad that I'm not showing love to them. I'm going to do both together. So we're going to have fun doing that together. So um, enjoy the rest of the season. Go to both teams and peace.